Thank you, George, uh, for, uh, for introducing me, but also for all the incredible work you do as our MP for Skyview, uh, a proud Calgarian, uh, a proud voice for Alberta within, uh, within our party and within our government. It is really, really a pleasure to be back here with you uh, and, uh, and making this important announcement. It's great to be back in Calgary, great to be back here at SAIT. Uh, thank you so much, Sonia, for uh, your leadership here uh, in the school, but also, uh, David, thank you for uh, welcoming us as well. And, and, uh, <coughs> Thank you to all the uh, teachers and instructors and, and leaders here uh, that make SAIT such an extraordinary uh, institute where so much happens, uh, not just uh, building the future and training uh, you know, students to be able to have the impact that they need to have in the economy of tomorrow, but also directly serving uh, communities in ways that really demonstrate the values and the ethos that is, uh, that is typical to uh, SAIT, but also typical to Albertans, uh, being there for each other, visionary about the future, and working hard every step of the way. That's why it's so great to be back in Alberta, it's so great to be having conversations uh, with people about what governments can do to make sure people are having the best possible future. Uh, because we all know times are tough right now. There's challenges around inflation, challenges around affordability, particularly around housing and groceries, uh, concerns about the impacts of climate change and what that's going to mean uh, for jobs in the future, for careers that young people can have. There's a lot of uncertainty in a world that's changing right now. And that's why, as a government, we've continued to step up. And it hasn't been automatic, and it hasn't been easy, because there's a lot of different perspectives on how to best help Canadians to move forward. Uh, I will say that our uh, conversations with the government of Alberta about how to build a strong future have always been very constructive. Our commitment to investing in a better future for all Canadians includes especially Alberta, because here is where uh, so much of the economic growth of the uh, power of a net zero future is going to happen right across the country uh, and around the world. So continuing to be here to invest, uh, whether it's investing in housing, investing in other competition and affordability measures around groceries, uh, and moving forward with a climate plan that puts more money in people's pockets while we reduce our emissions and prepare uh, for the decarbonization challenges that will continue to have Alberta providing energy in the future. These are all the things uh, that we've been focused on and we're going to continue to focus on and work with Albertans uh, at all levels of government to be able to deliver. Mais ici aujourd'hui, euh, je suis très content d'être euh, ici pour parler de la santé parce que nous reconnaissons à quel point c'est important de garder les Canadiens en santé. And speaking about healthcare uh, is an essential building block of an access, a successful future for Canadians. Uh, we moved forward last year with announcements around $200 billion in investments in healthcare right across the country, negotiating uh, deals with the provinces to make sure that we're delivering more primary care, that we're delivering uh, better support for frontline healthcare workers, that we're moving forward on mental health and that we're p underpinning all of that with better data collection so we can truly see what's happening, what's happening well in different parts of the country where it needs to be improved and so Canadians can actually have a uh, real understanding of the results and the improvements that their tax dollars are investing in in public health care systems right across the country. We've uh, announced recently we're moving forward on pharmacare, uh, particularly around diabetes and contraception because we know those are two areas where people are unfortunately having to make choices uh, between paying for groceries, putting food on the table, or their own health, well-being, uh, and future. And that's where uh, stepping up on that way is going to be really important. But today we're here to talk about dental care. Uh, this is a way for us to not just go at people's health and improve health outcomes for Canadians across the country. It's also a way of dealing with affordability. Last year, almost half a million kids whose families don't have any sort of dental coverage were able to go to the dentist because we stepped up around dental care. And this year, we've already seen 1.3 million seniors sign up for our Canada Dental Care Plan. Uh, this is going to make a huge difference right across the country. So far, Canadians 70 and older uh, are registering for this program. Uh, within a month, uh, it'll be down to 65 and older who can register, and people will start getting services uh, as of later this spring right across the country. Uh, it's a really exciting time because we know that uh, 
uh, that uh, mouth health is body health increasingly and making sure that our seniors and our young people as a first step have access to dental care is about creating both healthier outcomes and less pressures on our on our healthcare systems but also better quality of life while taking away some of the affordability challenges for people it makes a huge difference and it's something that we're very very pleased to be stepping up on and delivering uh, for seniors right now right across the country uh, d'investir dans les soins de santé dentaire uh, c'est juste quelque chose de profondément logique. Ça aide avec les coûts de la vie et l'abordabilité, avec des gens qui euh, sont vulnérables et qui ne pouvaient pas se payer des visites chez le dentiste. Ça aide avec la qualité de vie, avec euh, la qualité euh, de, 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 des soins médicaux qu'on reçoit. Euh, on est en train d'investir tout de suite dans un avenir plus fort pour tous.